rules, regulations, laws, kind of our commandments of today's world, they're, they're all part of life, aren't they? As a, as a parent, I'm sure our, the kids in the room today will probably start to nod at this, that uh, parents have various rules and different things, uh, guidelines for their kids. Uh, Various situations require these different things to understand how to operate, uh, how you you can obey and and, uh, be a a good person. One example that I thought of, uh, we have these rules, of course, and and things to guide uh, our son Simeon. Uh, and one example of that is especially when it comes to parking lots and uh, whenever Simeon's outside near the road that we live on, because it can sometimes get busy certain times of day. And so the biggest ones for Simeon are, one, don't cross the end of our driveway and go into the road. And two, always hold the hand of an adult if you are crossing the street or if you're in a parking lot. Now, Simeon's not always the best at following these rules on on his own. He's only two, so I get it. But there's this one time just recently at church when uh, he's, of course, pretty familiar with this place. And so we parked and we're about to come in and uh, uh, he saw the door. He knows how to get in. He knows where he's going. And he starts to kind of just before you even have a chance to grab his hand, start to, to run a little bit. Of course, as a parent, your immediate reaction is, Simeon James, stop. You need to hold a ha- our, one of our hands. So he stops. It's good. Turns around, and he asks the favorite question of every two-year-old. Anybody want to take a guess? Why? Yeah, exactly. My initial reaction was to say, because I said so. That's all you need to know right now. It's kind of a way to just shut down discussion. This is all you need to know is you just need to listen in this moment. Now, we explain once again about why we need to be safe and there's cars and different things we need to watch out for. But that phrase, because I said so, basically means, hey, I'm your parent. I think I know what's best for you most of the time. And so that's all you need to know. You just need to listen in this moment. Well, today we're, we're kicking off this brand new series. We're calling it the Tender Commandments, looking at the zeroth commandment here to start with. And they're based on these very famous laws in the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments as we know them. But when I think about them, I think a lot of times people study them and kind of see them as these parental rules, so to speak. Kind of as if we follow them simply because God said so and we just have to kind of blindly follow them. Or sometimes we might take it a step further and think, well, you know, I better follow these things because otherwise God's going to be mad at me and he might, he might even punish me. But God's intent with these Ten Commandments goes so much deeper than just some kind of rules you need to follow. They're much more profound than a divine decree for his people. That's why we're thinking about these Ten Commandments as tender commandments, because they were given to us out of God's love for his people and for us as well as his people today. And so we're not just going to talk about what the commandments say and what they mean. We'll certainly talk about that, but we're also going to talk about why each commandment was given to us, why each one is, is important, what the purpose is behind each one. And so with that in mind, we start kind of our look at these with an introductory word with our text from today, from Exodus 19. As God is having a discussion basically with Moses, he's telling him what he should say to the people. And right here, he reveals a bit of his intent behind the Ten Commandments. And here's what he says to Moses. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. God is giving those words to Moses to then pass on to the people. And by doing so, God is making it clear 
his track record, how he has already acted on behalf of his people, Israel. After all, if you just reverse a little bit in the story of Exodus, you'll see that God has sent these 10 plagues on Egypt to free his people from from slavery to the Egyptians. And then God parted the Red Sea to save his people from Pharaoh's army. He led Israel through a barren wilderness. He gave them water from a rock. He rained down manna from the sky for, for food. And that's why God can say, I carried you on eagle's wings. In fact, this is a pretty cool image to think about because uh, if you were to study, uh, study the eagle, certain uh, breeds of eagle, this is actually how a mother eagle protects their eaglet. When an eaglet is learning to, to fly and, and they're kind of going out on their own for the first time, the mother eagle will fly underneath that eaglet. So in case it inter- encounters any turbulence or an obstacle or just, you know, falters in the sky, they'll just fall right on top of the mother. And so God is saying to his people, likewise, I've been with you. Not only have I been right there alongside of you through all of it, I've also been under you, ready to catch you, to support you, to protect you from any turbulence you encounter. God also acknowledges here that he knows they'll still encounter those stumbling blocks in their lives. And so God desires to do the exact same thing in the future, just like in the past. So God establishes his his track record for his people, and then he continues to share his goal for his people as well. He says, basically, see all the things I have done for you, but also see how I want good things for you in the future. And so God continues in the next two verses. If you want to obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you, Moses, are to speak to the Israelites. Through Moses, God tells his people he wants them to be his treasured possession, his kingdom of priests, his holy nation. That's why he's already done all this for his people. If you think about this in context of Bible times, priests were this group of people who were very close to God. You could say they were the holiest people around. They were closer to God than just the general public of the Israelites. But God says, I don't just want a a small group of priests. I want you to be a kingdom of priests. I want you all to be close to me as your God. And that's exactly why God gave his commandments, so that his people would be drawn close to him. But here's the problem. What God desires, has spoken about his people Israel, isn't often what Israel wanted themselves. In fact, I was thinking back on on that subject uh, to uh, November, to uh, Anna's wedding, and what an awesome time that was to be able to take part in uh, the ceremony and the reception. I think it was especially fun for uh, for Simeon. This is probably one of the first weddings that he actually kind of understood and could participate in a little bit, and especially since he loves music and loves to dance, he had a lot of fun on the dance floor at the reception. But it got to be late, probably at least two hours past his bedtime. And so uh, Stacy and I were started to kind of think, well, we got to make our trek home at some point. And so we went over and knelt down and said, Simeon, it's it's time to go home. It's way past your bedtime. You've got to go to bed. You can guess the response. No. So eventually we just had to go over and I had to pick him up and just carry him out. You can guess how that went also. 
stop. I don't want to go home. Let me go. In that moment, though he loves to be carried and picked up, he had wanted nothing to do with his parents. He wanted to do his own thing. He thought he knew what was best for him in that moment. And that's what Israel did too. They didn't want to be close to God oftentimes. They wanted to just tell God, hey, you know what? Stop, hands off, let us do our own thing for a while. Even though God had done all of these great things that God is trying to remind them of, they still said to God, let us do our own thing. We'd, they even say at one point, we'd rather be back in Egypt, back in slavery, because they just don't like their circumstances at that moment. And we do the same thing. God's desire, as he's expressed to us through his word, is to pick us up, to hold us close, to protect and guide us. But so often, our response is something like, God, stop. Let me do my own thing for a while. I think I can handle this situation myself. And so every time then we, we fail to do things God's way, every time we sin, every time we, we go our own way, we say, stop, God. Just let me do my own thing for once. But this is where we see how God responds even when his people has, have rebelled, have rejected his commands time and time again. Here's what God does. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. And so, first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. This is what sets up, what begins God's launch into these 10 commandments for his people. But notice how it begins. It says simply that these are God's words, God's statements, God's instructions, God's guidance for his people. These then are God's words of love and tender care for a people that he wants to be close to him. And so God's first word then, the zeroth commandment as we're talking about today essentially is, I am the Lord your God. Remember what I have done for you. You know, as a, as a parent saying something like, because I said so, is, is, it might seem like it's dismissive but really, it's calling on the evidence that I love my son and I want to do what's best for him. In fact, that's the entire reason that we have rules and instructions for Simeon. We take the initiative to care for him by setting boundaries, guidelines. And that's what God tells us then through his word, through the Ten Commandments, he sets these guidelines because he loves us. God takes the initiative to tenderly care for us. That's proven for us when we see how he sent his son, Jesus Christ, his one and only son, to be with us. He's called Emmanuel. That's what that means. He was sent to be close to us, and then to go on to rescue us, redeem us, save us from doing our own thing. And so Jesus is the embodiment of what God intends through his tender commandments, his tender words to you and me. And so as we prepare to dive into these commandments over the next several weeks, uh, may we uh, remember the promise of these tender commandments, that before God gives us his, his, his rules to live by, before God expects us to keep them, he shows us his love. He reminds us of all that he's done for us. 
And so that means that these words are good words. And even more than that, these words of the Ten Commandments especially are good news. Amen. Let's pray then. Heavenly Father, we thank you as we remember what you have all done for us in our lives and throughout the history of the world. We thank you for reminding us of those things and then pointing us toward your words of Scripture, your words of guidance, of instruction, of, of, of these commandments. Uh, may you guide us to live in these things and to open our hearts and our minds to study and learn and, and keep them over the next several weeks as we pray in Jesus' name, our Savior, who came to be close to us. Amen.